let me first start out with a little bit of the historical perspective. And I think that one of the things you look at is when the park was first envisioned, my understanding, and, and I want to make sure people know my role, my role on the foundation board is to try and help raise money. I don't know what the signed agreements are between the county and, and the, the SAC and all that. I wasn't a part of the board, either board. I'm not on the county commission, and I'm not certainly the county attorney, and I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not on the SACA board. So my efforts have to do with trying to make charitable contributions to people who raise money uh, for what I think is a wonderful facility. And even in your own uh, uh, presentations, you agree, it's a wonderful facility, one that I think over time will become the Central Park of Sarasota and Manatee County, very similar to what Central Park is in New York City. And, it has a 160-year head start on it, so I, I think you have to be a, a little understanding that this, when this vision came about, it's only four or five years old, so it needs a little time to, to just stay here. Uh, and it was really not, I, 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 take, I took a note where I said, well, you saw Benderson saw a much bigger visit, vision and sold it to the community. It was actually the community that came to the Bendersons and the, and the rowers and said, you really have something here that can be world class. Does it need some work? Does it need some investment? Yes, it does. But you have an opportunity here, and it was Harry Parker who I, I, I never knew who Harry Parker, Parker was until the park came about, and he was the coach of Harvard, the most famous rowing school university in the United States, and, and he came down and said, you have a jewel, you have a rare opportunity here. And if you look at it today, it is the only FISA certified course in all of North America, so his vision, as far as him seeing that you had this opportunity, is correct. And when I look at this, I look at it as a, it's a public park. And, and whether five million or 10 million has been donated so far from the, from the private sector, most of that under the, the, the generosity of the Benderson family, uh, it still is all generated and given to the public. The public owns that, that beautiful tower there now and will own all the facilities. So I look at this as, as a, a journey, and one that, yes, we set some very ambitious goals. We didn't meet all those goals. There's not a boathouse. I'd be stupid to sit here and say, well, it's really out there somewhere. <laughs> um, but it doesn't mean we've said, well, world championships are over, so if you want a boathouse, that's your problem. The Fender Medicine Foundation is still there, still trying to go out there and raise money. Our goal is to, to have the boathouse eventually, uh, our goal is to finish the improvements, but a lot of improvements were made to begin with, and it's it's a facility that has charitable events, breast cancer <coughs> events were out there, uh, uh, runs were out there. Uh, there's been a lot of things, and a lot of the tax money is actually tourism money, which the park helps generate a lot of tours. And so that's another thing that I think you have to keep in context. When you look at what makes a community a community, there are a number of things that are contributed to through tourism taxes. There's over $5 million a year that goes to beach renourishment. What kind of community would we be without the beaches? So it's a good investment. There's, there's a couple million dollars a year that goes to the arts community. What kind of community would we be without the arts? But I can make the argument that, well, when is the private sector going to take care of all the art stuff? When's the Van Weasel not going to need a $100,000 a year from the taxpayer? When is the, the Sarasota Ballet not going to need that money of 100000 a year? So you can, everyone can make an argument. I think all these things are wonderful. It's what makes Sarasota, Sarasota. Uh, if you look at the Legacy Trail, it's a $38 million investment for people to ride their bikes up and down. Now, if you're against the legacy trail, you could say, well, where, what is that going to generate? Is it going to generate people to come here and, and generate tax dollars and generate tourism? Probably not. It'll generate some, but again, it's, a, and it's an asset to the community. The, the stadium, the Orioles Stadium, the difference in the Rowing Park and the Orioles Stadium, which is a couple, couple, couple million a year, I keep shaking this thing, uh, a couple million a year, you can't take your, your son and your daughter and say, you know what, let's go down to the Orioles Stadium, let's play some baseball, and, and I'll throw the ball around with you because you can't go in there, even though your tax money's going towards that. Again, I'm not being critical of any of these other facilities because they're all the things that make us a community. I just find it interesting that 
something that was a borrow pit. And the borrow pit wasn't created by the Bendersons. It was already there, created by an I-75. And could have remained a borrow pit. It has been turned into what I think will be, 50 years from now, when I'm dead and gone, the premier park in Sarasota and Manatee County. And all we're doing is trying to make it better every day. That's our effort. Have we had obstacles at times? Have we not always been able to live up to where we thought we were going to be? Yes, but it's not been from a lack of effort. It's not been from a lack of trying. And there was no nefarious um, conspiracy here to say, let's, let's try to tell the county, yeah, what we really want to do is we want to build this world-class park, and we're going to suck a lot of money off them, and it's all a big ruse. The, the goal is to make sure this remains a world-class park, and even with the challenges of the World Championships, which did not have all the facilities that we thought we were going to have, it was wildly successful. Not just by the local community like it, but all the people. If you were out there and I was there, it was wonderful. And all the competitors thought it was wonderful. The sanctioning body thought it was wonderful. And they're coming back again next year. The NCAA Division One, Two, and Three Championships are going to be here next year. Right, we have three high schools now in the community that have rowing. Why? Because we have a rowing facility here. USF Sarasota Manatee is now a Division I certified women's rowing team. Why do they have that? Because we have the rowing facility here. We all want our children and grandchildren to stay here, not go away. Like my grandchildren have to go out to Texas every time I want to see them. I don't like that. So if we can keep them here, if we can make the, these facilities work more, then we get more. You pay taxes towards all these other parks too. The Legacy Trail, the other parks, you pay taxes for it. Why is it that only this one do you want to break down? The, what the dollars and cents are. I'm not saying it's wrong to ask questions. I think it's a good thing. But I also feel that to some degree this has been singled out because of the name that's on it rather than because it's a good thing for the community. And I think it's a really good thing for the community. And I think a decade or more from now, you'll really see it even more. It's, it's like a child. It's only five or six years old. Let it grow, get up on its feet, it just learned to crawl. And that's, that's my feelings on the park. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that question you just raised. Okay. Well, and Rick, uh, he, he said it all in regards to what, the, what this um, park is for the community, but I came from a, a little bit of a different background, and that's from the sports industry. Before I came down here in August, I was working for the Florida Sports Foundation for 18 years, and I remember when this idea got pitched to the state of Florida and when it got pitched to the Florida Sports Foundation. And my first thought was, these guys aren't gonna pull this off, there's no way. It's a great vision, but there's no way you're gonna pull it off. And we saw things develop, we supported it. And all of a sudden, here's the park being built. Then there's a bid put in for the World Rowing Championships and you won. And then we just held a successful, and many FISA officials publicly stated one of the best, if not the best, world rowing championships in the history of the event. You pulled it off. And I, I don't know if everyone understands what this has done for the future of the park. FISA, and everyone knows what FISA is, right? The International Governing Body for the Sport of Rowing. Um, FISA had already given us the World Rowing uh, Masters Regatta that's coming up this year. They've already turned around and come back, and they want to host the under-23 World Rowing Championships here in the following year. And they have a vision and understanding of what this park means to the sport of rowing in the United States. And what this has done for us, marketing-wise, as a community, it's difficult to put numbers, but it's invaluable. And it's not just for the sport of rowing. During the World Rowing Championships, I know both Visit Sarasota County and the Bradenton Area Convention and Visitors Bureau was bringing, they were both bringing rights holders over to the World Rowing Championships 
to show them what this community can pull together and do. And we're talking about people that are baseball people. What do they care about, really? Well, they care about what a community can pull together and do. So this has made a major investment in the area of sport tourism here in Sarasota County and also up in Manatee County. And the beauty of it is, is that even though I hate hearing the word Rowing Park, it's Nathan Benderson Park, but it's Nathan Benderson Park because it's not just a rowing park. It is a community park. And if you look at our calendar of events, it's not all rowing. It's not even a majority of rowing. It's so many different events. We have festivals, we have runs, you know, we have triathlons that go on there. And then we have individuals that frequent the park. We went out and did a count on a random Sunday without any events in the park. We had 1,300 um, unique users of the park staying for over an hour um, there when we counted on that random Sunday with nothing going on. So there's a lot of individuals that are utilizing the park. I see them every day when I pull into work in the morning. And I feel terrible because they're in shape and I'm not, and I should be out there. <laughs> but, but um, you know, and, and the beauty of it is that not only does this, this community have a world-class, despite the fact that there's some things up there that still need to be built, and they will be built eventually, but you have a world-class rowing facility. What else is world-class? What can we name that's world-class? Even in the state of Florida. You know, so you have a world-class facility. You have a beautiful 600-acre community park. And you know what? All the funding that we've been receiving that is, at least from Sarasota County, is bed tax dollars. So unless you're staying in a hotel, it's not coming out of your pocket. It's coming out of the pocket of the tourists that come and spend money here and stay in hotels and pay those bed tax dollars. And I know that, you know, we can sit here and say, well, there's other things that we can do with those bed tax dollars. Well, yeah, and that's why you have you know, government officials and leaders in the community that make decisions of where that money goes. And one of the things that they weigh is obviously your return on investment when you're utilizing bed tax dollars. And, but I'll tell you that bed tax dollars are limited to what you can utilize them for by state statute. So you're not going to take bed tax dollars and feed the homeless or build, you know, shelters or anything like that. There's very specific purposes that you can spend bed tax dollars for. So, um, you know, I personally, I think it was a great investment. Now I'm coming from a world of sports and I have a very uh, big love and desire for sport tourism. So, <laughs> but, um, but I think that everyone's going to have a different opinion. Should the money have been allocated towards, you know, this project? Should it have been another project? You know, I, I think that we can all agree that if we took a poll across Sarasota County, Manatee County, and the state of Florida, who, who knows what the percentage would be of those that support public-private partnerships, that don't, that believe in government subsidies towards projects like this, or don't believe in them. So I think that's something that we certainly cannot, you know, uh, sit here and resolve uh, in this room, but I think certainly uh, we can show you what you, the citizens of Sarasota County, are getting, you know, from those bed tax dollars and what that return on investment is. Um, and that way you can at least understand it. And you know what? You may not like some of the answers and you may not like the return on investment and maybe you think some other projects are better. And, you know, I respect that, but at least we can help answer some of those questions and tell you where that money's going to and, and what's it doing and why is it there's a request for, for more dollars in there and you know, we can certainly help clarify that. So one thing that I know there's a question about the 43 point 
$5 million. So, I unfortunately, I can't go off of newspaper clippings and all that. I have to go off of information I have in contracts and documents and stuff like that. So I'm coming up with that dollar amount from an $18.7 um, million dollar bond from Sarasota County that's being paid out of um, half a penny of the bed tax. $12.5 million in state appropriations. $2.5 million. Oh, hold on. $2.5 million of state appropriations that we have not collected yet. We were awarded, but we haven't submitted those reimbursements. $4.2 million of Sarasota County, Vanity County, and Visit Sarasota County funding, which would be bed tax dollars, for a number of things, operations, maintenance, marketing, special events that we bring in that they help support or pay bid fees for bringing in events. Then there was a uh, 2.7 million from Manatee County for funding of the World Rowing Championships, as well as another 2.7 from Sarasota County. So that's where I'm coming up with 43.5 million total public funding year to date. So I know that, um, and I could be wrong, and you might have different numbers, and we could. Pretty close. Yeah. So, um, so one of the things that that I've heard before in, in the past from criticisms about the state funding is, where is the money going? This money went somewhere. It's going in, you know, Benderson Development's pocket, or it's, you know, it, it's being paid for work that wasn't done, or you know, and, and I've heard all kinds of. So let me help explain a little bit how this money works. Let's start with state money. Um, the appropriations that were given, which were a, let me break it down for you. It was, uh, I think it was, the first one was $5 million, and the second one was $5 million. So there was two, ten, or two $5 million appropriations that add up to $10 million. That was an agreement between Enterprise Florida and Sarasota County. Senka was not in existence when that happened. We didn't have anything to do with that. But I will tell you that just like any state money, a $10 million check did not get written and given to Sarasota County with the hopes that maybe something happened. These are reimbursement grants. So you have to complete the work you have to pay for it. You have to provide the state with invoices. You have to provide them with pictures and evidence that the work was actually done. It gets reviewed by the department that manages the contract. And then it goes to their financial department and they review it. And if you're lucky, you don't get any questions back. Sometimes you do, and you have to get more documentation and all that and clarify some things, or maybe you wrote something wrong on the invoice. Excuse me, Mr. Yeah. Rodriguez. I can tell because the crowd is getting restless and that we might be at the level of minutia that we're losing people. So I'm going to back us off just a little bit. Okay, all right. Um, I think people do want to hear where you're going with this, but I want to just have us revisit the point of, I think everyone is pretty much in agreement. It's a grand vision, and some people are going to like it better than others. Um, but that aside, I think one of the central questions that has been presented is money promised versus money delivered um, on the private side. And obviously, Mr. Piccolo, you're working on that. Um, but I'd like to bring us back to that because that's kind, of, that's kind of the donut hole of our issue here. Um, how are things going to be paid? How are we going to do the rest of the vision um, if the money isn't there? And how do we make the money get there? So. Well, I, I think that in trying to get the, in trying to get the money there, uh, I think that we're certainly continuing to make that happen. Uh, I can't answer what the future is going to happen. Still losing you there. I can't answer what the future will. All right, I, I don't know 
will be entirely successful, not entirely successful. I do think that this organization could be more helpful in helping to promote the park and promote its value to its, to its community. One of the things in trying to raise funds is if it has nothing but negative uh, feedback from people, it's not, it's not, it's not going to be easy. Uh, <laughs> All right, how's that? So, I do think that each step we've taken, when you look at the World Championships as an example, having pulled that off very successfully, I think will spur more people and get more publicity of what we're actually building. Not just here, but across the world. Because a lot of people didn't know where Sarasota was six months ago before that World Championship that came here has a tremendous economic impact. We had 17 of the teams come through the airport itself. So I, I can't answer, I can't sit here and tell you, in 18 months, this will be raised and that'll be done. But I can tell you that everyone that's involved with the foundation and everyone that I know that's involved with SAC is committed to doing their very best to make sure that this is successful and it is not on the public's dime and that we, we are successful to it. We're looking at other alternatives of the boathouse doesn't have to have that, that meeting facility in it, which I think is, would be the best way because then it becomes self-sufficient and in the long term, if you look at expenses over the long term, it's a better gener generator of revenue which makes the park self-sufficient. But they could take that 11 or $12 million boathouse, turn it into a $6 million boathouse by just taking all that stuff away and just making a boathouse like they have out at Fort Hanger. It's a much more basic building. So, so it all depends on what our vision is together and what we can accomplish. I think that we're, we're, we're diverting ourselves into saying, well, we didn't get to this goal line when we thought we would, and therefore it's a total failure when it's not. And it doesn't mean that anyone has given up on this. I understand that it's been a, a good public investment, a heavy public investment, $40 million is not something to sneeze at. But as I said, if you, one, they're tourist taxes, and secondly, if you look at the investments made by tourist taxes, there's $5 million a year going to beach renourishment. So over this period, this six-year period that we're talking about, $30 million was invested in sand, all right? Because that's $5 million a year. Two million years going to the arts. Over the last six years, we spent twelve million dollars on ballet and theater and all that. So you can you can make these arguments all day long as to what what you like might be the arts. I might like rowing. Someone else might like the beaches. They're all part of what Sarasota is. I think they're all good investments. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't. I think Bill and Pat should be thanked for being on top of things and wanting to make sure that, that our elected officials are, are keeping an eye on where these dollars are going. I think it was right of the speaker to say, all right, let me take a look at this. But I think in the end, you will find that the dollars were well spent and they were spent successfully. I, I'd be much more worried if the World Rowing Championships had been a total bust. And when you look at it in the context of Hurricane Irma came one week before the rowing championships, I know from the from the Bendersons themselves, they spent a lot of their own money and had a lot of their own crews out there cleaning things up and fixing things up in time for the World Rowing Championships. So they have a deep appreciation for what this means to the community. And I think sometimes they get maligned for things that they shouldn't be maligned for. Uh, Rick, yeah. <clears throat> one, one question the, the, the kind of puzzles me. Why has it been so difficult to raise the 22 million? Because I know that the vision was, and you all have that sense, that we're going to get corporate sponsors they are going to do. I have always had trouble figuring out, well, where's, what's the reluctance? Because the fact is, everything you say is correct. It is a gorgeous park. The event was something fabulous to have. All of that is true. Why have the donors. That's, that's the sixty thousand dollar question. I, I don't know why it's been. I, I had the same question in the sense that I don't know why it's as difficult as. Maybe it's because it's a more 
specialty sport. Maybe it's because people don't think uh, that didn't think that we could pull it off. And, and it, we've we've tried with professional fundraisers and all that thing. So we're we're making that effort. And it's not from a lack of effort. It's not from a lack of going out there. I don't know what the answer is yet. And and I think sooner or later we're gonna we're gonna hit on it. We're gonna find the right people that are interested in this. Uh, and it is in its infancy, and that is something I, I don't know the the Roman community that well. I was this was all new to me. I became interested in it because I thought it was good for the community, and frankly, in my position at the airport, it was good for the airport. We've generated a lot of tourism. We've generated a lot of teams coming through there. So my job at the airport is to generate business, and I thought this was a good thing both for the community and the airport. I, I wish I had a better answer for you. People like your Harry Parker, was it? The, yeah. the guy? And there are a lot of graduates of Harvard, MIT, and Cornell that have that rode their whole careers there and they love rowing. Have you all somehow gotten into those people who could be they, very well? They've gotten into some of that and, and, and hiring professional fundraisers and trying to find ways where using the, you had put up on your slide, Mr. Anderson, trying to use the, the assets of the knowledge of the Gulf Coast Community Foundation. I, I'm not good at fundraising. I, I, I hate that stuff. It's, it's not comfortable asking people for money. It, it takes a unique skill set to do that. Uh, and I don't know because when you look at this community, the philanthropy here is just unbelievable. They give to, to all sorts of things. and. And I just think that when you look at what the Bendersons have given on this, it's been very substantial. And, and so it's the vilification of them that I, I have a hard time understanding versus uh, if you look at the Van Wazel, Mr. Roskamp gave a million dollars to the, the Van Wazel and the, and the performance hall is named after him. I haven't heard people say, well, why don't they have a center aisle in the, in the middle there? Because it's the only time I hear some complaints at times. So you got to walk all the way. If you're in the center, you got a long walk. So it's, it's just the idea that we're trying really, really hard. And we're going to continue to try regardless of the criticism. And, and I can pledge to you 100% effort. I don't know how it will turn out because I can't predict the future. In my heart, I believe that 20 years from now, a couple decades from now, People in this community, the children and the grandchildren, would be going, I'm going out to that park because it's the best park in the world and the best park that's ever been created since Central Park in New York City. I'm saying that as a former New Yorker. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to the um, audience. Um, but one final comment. Uh, you brought us back to the issue at hand, which is how can you make such a massive, multi million dollar commitment? supposed to be a partnership, okay, without apparently any binding contracts to make good. Because if you required a binding commitment, then you might think twice about whether or not we can truly make this real. Instead of being in this position now, where potentially in 2018 with all these great things on the calendar, you're going to have more public money possibly paying for more rentals big events, etc. And then finally, vilifying Benderson development is not part of this meeting. Okay, this is really a dollar and cents thing. Where are our funds going? If we have partnerships, they need to be real. We don't need to be going back to the state six months after we win a bid for more public money. And I will leave it at that. And anybody